I'm Hans-Ulrich Obrist, I'm curator and co-director of the Serpentine Galleries in London. We are the 20th day of the third month of the 15th year of the second decade of the first century of the third millennium. Uh, basically, um, I uh, have always had a very strong curiosity and I suppose it comes from my childhood. I grew up near a monastery library where I was early on confronted with this idea of you know, gathering all the knowledge of the world. And I think I've always had this desire you know, to somehow gather knowledge, bring knowledge together. And obviously we do have more and more information. The question is how we transform this, this transformation into knowledge and how we transform this information into uh, yeah, also into, into memory. Now, in a way, um, uh, for me, all these sources of information are important. Uh, of course, you know, online research has added to the research of actually looking at art, you know, physically and going to see exhibitions, uh, and one doesn't replace the other. It's just really many parallel realities, and, you know, I continue to make lots of studio visits, I go and see exhibitions, that's where I see most things. But then, as we can see with 89 Plus, you know, Simon Gasti and I, see a lot of work online through that which otherwise we couldn't see and uh, so it's you know multiple multiple sources multiple parallel realities and um, uh, it's always fooled by curiosity curiosity is the engine my advice is to read Edouard Glissant for me Edouard Glissant uh, Edouard Glissant is the great writer uh, for our 21st century <laughs> he was a very dear friend of mine he died a couple of years ago um, was uh, originally from Martinique and lived between Paris and New York and he is very much a toolbox, how, how we can cope and negotiate on a daily basis, you know, uh, our global reality and yet produce difference. Edouard Glissant is not only very much, in, you know, has inspired the idea of creolization, but he also coined this notion of mondialité. And, and mondialité, in English we could sort of form a neologism and call it mondiality, is a global dialogue which produces difference and does not annihilate it. Because obviously the homogenizing forces of globalization are also at stake in the arts. And, and the question is how can we resist that? Because we have to resist homogenization. Homogenization leads to a disappearance of languages, to a disappearance of culture, uh, to a disappearance of many things, to extinction at the end of the day. Homogenization of globalization leads to extinction, to eventually to our own extinction, as Gustav Metzger says. And we, we did this with the Serpentine Gallery's Extinction Marathon last year. Where, you know, how can we resist that? It's a wake-up call. And obviously, you know, Susan Hiller presented her wonderful film on you know, the, the disappearance of languages. How can we make sure that the, the, the many languages in the world coexist, that they don't disappear into one or two or three languages? But then, uh, for example, as a very small thing, but not a minor thing, handwriting. We have, uh, through technology, the disappearance of handwriting. I launched on Instagram and Twitter a movement to celebrate handwriting every day, to resist this idea of you know, disappearance of handwriting. And that's all inspired by Edouard Glissant. All my exhibitions, you know, the 89 Plus project with Simon Caste, uh, Cities on the Move with Wuhan Roo, Do It, are deeply inspired by Edouard Glissant because they are projects of mondialité. They are projects which uh, do take into account the enormous possibilities we now have with technology. Because it would be foolish not to use that because we have for the first time this true possibility of a truly global dialogue. And we don't want to reject that, but we want to do it in a way, we want to engage with it in a way which does not homogenize, which does not lead to extinction, but in a way which produces difference. And that's something I think we need to think about every day. And that's why uh, every day when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is uh, I read 50 minutes of uh, Edouard Glissant. And my big hope for the next years to come is that there are more translations of Edouard Glissant, because I think Edouard Glissant's work, many of his dozens of books exist only in French. They still have to be translated into Spanish, have to be translated into Arabic, have to be translated into Chinese, have to be translated into many, many languages. The 21st century is very much Edouard Glissant. Yes, basically uh, it's, a very, it's a very interesting question because I've, you know, uh, as part of my research recorded so far about 2,500 hours of interviews and conversations, um, and many of them have been filmed. It just hasn't been the time yet to develop a site, but the idea is in the long term to make it all accessible and all available. I just haven't had help with that and haven't had the time with it. Uh, so, uh, there, you know, uh, but the material is there. And Jonas Mekas, who you know, anticipated the, the, the online diary many years before, there was an online diary. We can say he's almost like, I think Jonas Mekas is a father of the blog. You know, Jonas Mekas, about 20 years ago, we were in a cafe in Paris. He said, you should film your interviews. You should not just record the voice, but you film them. And that's, you know, I listened to him. I always had a little camera, similar to yours, would record many of my conversations. So the archive exists, but 
we need the time to uh, to put it online. And at the same time, you know, sometimes delays are also interesting. One doesn't have to publish everything immediately. There can also be a, a delay uh, sometimes. And then, you know, but yeah, but it's definitely something I think about. And, you know, I think about it in terms of not only throwing it online. I think that's not enough. We can't just throw these conversations online. I'm very interested in the tagging. Uh, we've made an experiment with all my interviews with Cedric Price, how to tag the interviews with keywords. So whenever Cedric Price mentions Fan Palace or mentions, you know, um, Magnet City or some of his project, you know, you can have all the moments in my conversation. I've got 20 hours of Cedric Price, all the moments he mentions these things. And so we could imagine if all my 2,500 hours of interviews are, and conversations are tagged, that actually all these different people I met could start to talk to each other. That could be a polyphony. And I, you know, I'm very interested in this, in this polyphony. And I think tagging technology, and, that, and that's why it takes a little bit more time. And it's, for me, it's too easy to just throw it out online. I, I want to, to construct the online thing more. Like I edit books. You know, my books are, are, are not just uh, raw transcripts. They're edited. And, and, and in a similar way, I want to, to come up with a plan what to do with the digital archive.